Hi, and welcome to the introductory section for stochastic simulation models. I'm Rebecca Borchering, and we can go ahead and get started. So the main goals of this session are to understand the motivation for using stochastic models. Uh, and then there are two main types that we're going to talk about today. So discrete time stochastic simulation models and then event-driven stochastic simulation models. And we'll also learn about connecting these models to the different differential equation models that you've already seen in some of the other sessions and also recognize potential benefits and limitations of using these stochastic models. So to orient ourselves in the model taxonomy, um, we're going to start with the uh, chain binomial type models, in particular Reed Frost, but first we'll review the deterministic version of this model that was introduced briefly. But before we get into the details, I wanted to talk just a little bit about the difference between deterministic and stochastic overall. So deterministic events proceed without an element of chance, meaning for the same set of initial conditions and parameters, there will always be the same outcome. Versus stochastic events uh, or systems have an element of chance or randomness where you can have the same initial conditions and perimeter values that have different outcomes, depending on just different, uh, maybe runs of a simulation or um, versions of, a, you can imagine a system having different uh, potential outcomes um, that relates to the next slide. So why is stochastic? One of the, main things I think about, or the first, one of the first things I think about um, for using stochastic models is demographic stochasticity. So this comes out of having discrete finite individuals. Um, so instead of ordinary differential equations where uh, the number of individuals is continuous, it's, so it's not really a number of individuals. Um, and this is particularly important when you have small populations and if you're thinking about extinction questions, since deterministic ODE models um, don't ever quite reach zero in the solution. If, um, so if your questions are about extinction, it might make more sense to consider a stochastic model where you can actually simulate and get extinction events uh, where there are zero individuals left or maybe zero infected individuals left. Um, another reason why you might want to incorporate stochasticity in your model is that data, your data is probably noisy. All data is noisy. Um, I probably shouldn't say all, but um, the observation process is not perfect. Um, I guess particularly for wildlife pathogens uh, surveillance, it's really hard to observe individuals. Um, different groups of individuals might just be hard to reach. Um, so the observation process really will, can affect your uh, perception of what's going on. Um, and this is particularly true when the, you have only small sample sizes. Uh, so you can account to some extent for that element of uh, imperfect observation or unknown using stochastic methods. And then the last uh, reason that I'll mention is environmental stochasticity. So these are long-term changes in environmental drivers or other external drivers, uh, things like birth rates, death rates. Um, and here, so I have a, a graphic of precipitation in I think Key West, Florida and a few other locations. Um, these aren't things that we can predict. Uh, well, exactly, they're not deterministic, they're random. Uh, so having this, incorporating this element of chance or change in rates in your model may be important. So getting back to 
population size, uh, which is an incredibly important uh, thing to consider when you're choosing whether you want to use a deterministic versus a stochastic model. Uh, here I'm showing, um, so for different population sizes n, uh, the differential equation solution to a problem of introducing one infected individual in a population. And this is the steady state for that deterministic uh, ordinary differential equation. And then in each of these panels, there are 10 different realizations of the analogous stochastic process. And so you can see that that process actually has some extinction events here and here. Um, and an important thing to notice uh, is that, so uh, the scales are different. So here's one here, one here, um, this is much higher. Um, but the stochastic paths, uh, the red paths start to look more and more like the deterministic uh, solution to the ordinary differential equation. Uh, so when you have large population sizes, it may be, uh, an it, you might be willing to make the assumption or to use a deterministic model because deterministic models can approximate uh, large populations well, but this is not really the case for the small populations. So stochastic models uh, are really important when you have a small po population size and there's the element of chance or chance of going extinct uh, in particular, one example uh, is really important. So as I mentioned before, uh, we'll be discussing two approaches to stochastic simulation, discrete time and event driven. And let me introduce these. So for discrete time approaches, there's a fixed interval of time in between each step or state of the system. So uh, we'll call that delta t and that could be, uh, could represent one day, one year, um, but it's one unit of time and the state of the system, your system progresses by that same fixed amount of time at each time step. So you have, you start with the current state variables and parameters at time t, and then after that fixed amount of time, update those state and variable, state variables and parameter values. At, and then, so after delta t, the time will be t plus delta t. And this is different from event-driven simulation, stochastic simulation, where the time until, or the time to the next event isn't fixed at a particular value. So you, we start the same, you have a state and parameter values at time t, but instead of moving ahead a fixed amount of time, there's a random, amount of time that's drawn from a distribution. So we have to generate that time until the next event. And we have to generate or find, figure out what type of event it is. And we'll talk a lot more about that um, when we get to the event-driven uh, part two of this session. Um, so yeah, so the uh, random amount of time um, between events is drawn from a distribution and you update the state and perimeter values after that amount of time has passed as opposed to the fixed amount of time for discrete time models. 